Greetings one and all and welcome to a new time traveler video. Today we have the world famous, everybody definitely should know this one, Little Tramp, one and only Charlie Chaplin. Did the best I could with Sims 4. I seem to say that a lot, but this time I feel like there was just a little something missing. I also noticed that once you add the mustache, which was not real for him, like that, um, that I couldn't take it off for the rest of the outfits. So now he has a perpetual mustache. I still hope you enjoy. Got his makeup on there, looking good. So there may be some things you don't know about the little tramp. He was quite a prolific film actor, producer, director, but let's hear the whole story. Charles Spencer Chaplin was born in London on April 16th, 1889. His father was Charles Chaplin Sr. He was a vocalist and an actor who died when Charlie was quite young. His mother, Hannah Chaplin, was a talented singer in the light opera, but she did not make a lot of money. She went by the stage name of Lily Harley and she taught Charlie a lot about reading people, their expressions and understanding emotion, which ended up being very important to him later on. His father died when he and his brother Sidney were quite young and their mother became ill, um, mentally ill. So the boys had to provide their own income and ended up in workhouses when they were very, very young, living in extreme poverty. When Charlie was 14 years old, his mother was committed to a mental asylum. Charlie had a natural ability to perform due to his talented parents who were also performers. So he began working in music halls as a teenager, very early. At age 19, he signed on with the Fred Camo Company and he moved to the United States. In 1914, he was scouted by Keystone Studios to begin a film career. It was at this studio that he began to develop his beloved Tramp character and to build a very large fan base. He was a natural and he wowed the audiences of silent film. Many of his character themes were autobiographical and depicted life as a poor person in the streets. He was very ambitious and he decided that he would have more control if he ran his own career. So he began directing his own films and moved to a variety of production companies. Um, you'll see up there in his traits, later I'm gonna change one of those to music lover and I will be explaining that shortly. By 1915, Chaplin was a cultural phenomenon and was getting offers from all of the major studios, Universal, Fox, Vitagraph, and Mutual Film. He negotiated a deal with Mutual and ended up being one of the highest paid people in the world at that time, having acquired $670,000 a year. Today's equivalent would be $15.7 million a year. Can you imagine? Okay, <laughs> maybe you can. By 1918, he was one of the most famous personas in the world. In 1919, Chaplin co-founded the United Artist Company, which has gone on to have a world-renowned reputation. He now had full control of his films and made a series of films that garnered him immense fame. Among those were The Kid, 1921, A Woman of Paris, 1923, The Gold Rush, 1925, the Circus, 1928. Just to name a few. Films began to use sound as the 1930s began, and at first he was hesitant to use it in his films. During this period, he produced some of his more lasting pieces of work, including City Lights, 1931, Modern Times, 1936, which included some dialogue, and finally his first sound picture, the Great Dictator in 1940, which was a satire based on Adolf Hitler. He was becoming increasingly political and it showed in his films. In the 1940s, Chaplin became somewhat controversial. His popularity waned and he was accused of having communist sympathies, was constantly in the news for marrying younger women and then divorcing them and being involved in scandals such as a paternity suit filed by an obsessive ex that he had tried to break with when she claimed to be pregnant with his child. There's a lot of heavy details here. I chose to omit a great deal of them because we're trying to outline the stuff that was most prominent in his life, which was his filmmaking. That was what he was all about. Um, and eventually he was very much about family, but again, we'll get to that in a second. 
These events in his life were sensationalized by the media and there was talk that J. Edgar Hoover himself was looking to smear Charlie's reputation. He succeeded. An FBI investigation was launched and Chaplin was forced to leave the United States, settling in Switzerland. Chaplin made some more films in the late 1940s through the early 1960s, working as a true perfectionist and writing, directing, producing, editing, starring in, and composing all music for his remaining films. He was financially independent and was able to spend years developing films that were a mix of comedy and awareness for the human condition, addressing social and political themes often. Despite any controversy, he remained an icon and a pioneer in the film industry. In 1959, the Chaplin Review created a new passion for Chaplin's work. The films were re-edited, re-scored, and new ownership and distribution rights were acquired for their re-release. In 1962, Chaplin was allowed back into the United States, no longer considered a threat, and he suffered, sadly, a series of strokes in the late 60s and was forced to abandon new projects that he had been planning, some of which involved his kids, which were up-and-coming actors themselves. In 1972, there was yet another surge of interest in his work, and the Gold Rush, City Lights, and Modern Times, as well as The Great Dictator, were all named as being among the greatest films of all time by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. He was given an honorary Academy Award after being away from the U.S. for 20 years. He accepted the award for the, quote, incalculable effect he had in making motion picture the art form of this century, unquote. He continued to dream of projects, but had become very frail in the 1970s. He began to need care around the clock, and at age 88, on a quiet Christmas morning in 1977, Chaplin had a stroke in his sleep and passed away. Many celebrities made statements about the great influence Chaplin had been. Bob Hope was quoted as saying, we were lucky to have lived in his time. Charlie left behind his wife, Una, and several children and grandchildren. Over his lifetime, he had 11 kids, Norman, Charles Jr., Sidney, Geraldine, Michael, Josephine, Victoria, Eugene, Jane, Annette, and Christopher, most of whom pursued acting successfully and various other performance careers. He truly was a legend in so many ways. I did find one very strange tidbit about our Mr. Chaplin. It actually is kind of sad. In 1978, Chaplin's coffin was dug up and his body was stolen and held for ransom. His poor widow. <laughs> it was eventually found and returned to its proper place and put under reinforced concrete. Thank goodness for that. I'm including uh, some links in the description, some clips of videos that, you know, maybe you're interested in seeing the entire film. Most of these films were around 60 minutes or less. A few of them were just a touch longer. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about Charlie Chaplin, he really is an icon of the 20th century. And if you don't know about him, it's something that you should learn about just a little bit. Because even if you don't care for silent films or early films, he definitely is part of history. And I think he deserves another look. He definitely had an interesting and colorful life as well. You'll notice I also left out a lot of the controversy details. Again, just because the bulk of his life was spent doing some really amazing things for the human race as far as expressing emotion and just how we treat each other in the social setting, which right now I think not to become super political is very important. And I think it deserves a, it deserves a second look. I hope you're enjoying his apartment. I tried to model some of this apartment after um, his gigantic house. It was really a mansion that he had in Switzerland where his family lived. Really beautiful place. If you get to look up pictures of that, go ahead. <laughs> that is actually quite, quite lovely, an enormous house. Um, so I try to make this ultra fancy just to follow in that very classic ornate style that he used in that home. 
And even though it's just a tiny apartment, it has a little bit of opulence and that rich taste. So I hope you enjoy what remains of this video. Thank you for watching. As always, I hope that you are happy, safe, and extremely healthy, and that you have a beautiful day.